Hello, guten tag, welkommen by Dean Ostersen. And for my English-speaking viewers out there, hello, good day, and welcome to the Ostara Seas, as they're actually known, which is really exciting and really cool, which is one of the reasons we're actually here today filming. Uh, so I'll be taking you around this beautiful series of lakes and bogs to show you a few different things. So we're really getting towards the end of spring, which is what I'm really talking about today, is a lot of things that I've learned about Germanic mythology and Germanic folklore that you really can't find in just one book. It's all things that I've had to learn uh, through the help of Germanic people, um, giving me this information and leading me along the way, which is one of the reasons I'm out here today. So we're gonna talk about plants, we're gonna talk about spring, we're gonna talk about healing wells, and so many other things today in this kind of grab bag episode about Germanic mythology and Germanic folklore as it survives today. So thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you enjoy these beautiful views as we explore the Ostersin. So one of the main reasons I'm actually out here today is because of this plant called the Waldmeister or the Forest Master. Uh, so this plant actually has a very interesting history to the Germans and a very interesting modern history. And so it actually grows out here. And we were actually able to find some starts of the plant, but nothing was budding yet. So I don't know exactly when the time it actually comes out in buds, but we, we are pretty sure we have found like at least the starts of it because it looks almost identical to what we've been able to find. Uh, but the history of this plant is actually really fascinating. And so this plant actually is a spring celebratory herb that was used infused in alcohol, beer, and wine uh, to promote the spring spirit and promote, uh, you know, fertility and excitement and the new year. And so all the way up to the 1970s, Germans actually used this herb um, in their spring drinks. And uh, so much so that the children were using it and uh, like ice creams um, and lemonades and things like that. It was mixed with raspberries. And so it was very much a German cultural thing. However, in the 1970s, the government supposedly found information that it damaged the liver and it was completely outlawed out of nowhere. Uh, but recently, I believe it was in 2006 or at least the early 2000s, someone decided to do more research and found out that this herb, this plant, didn't have as bad of an effect as something like cinnamon. That cinnamon actually damaged your liver more than this herb. And so it was actually ridiculous that it was banned. Um, and technically it is legal once again to consume it. However, it is not legal to sell it in restaurants. So the cultural heritage of selling it within beers, wines, uh, and snacks, and just as a spring celebratory thing is gone. And I guess it actually was used almost as a soda as well. And then mysteriously also in the 1970s when it was outlawed, all of a sudden Coca-Cola uh, moved in and began taking the market. And so now it's almost impossible for it to get a foothold again. And so there could be a conspiracy here where it was so popular that it was removed by Coca-Cola so they could get a market share of the industry. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised based on a lot of the facts of the world. Uh, but there was actually a really good book. I'll link it right here. It's a German book uh, that was translated for me and this Waldmeister was actually has some form of a psychotropic effect as well if it's left in an alcoholic beverage for some time, uh, somewhere around eight hours uh, that it actually absorbs into the drink and then you actually feel more connected to the forest and that's one of the reasons it was called Waldmeister um, is that if you drank a certain dose of it um, you had some form of psychotropic effect and connection to nature. Uh, the history of this herb goes back for hundreds of years if not thousands of years um, and even has history with the Vikings as well uh, as being used as a spring celebratory drink. Uh, so just really fascinating stuff and the history behind it. Um, also the fact that we found it growing out here during the end of spring uh, and we actually were able to find this wine which actually contains the flavoring of it without actually containing the plant itself. So it actually tastes like it. Uh, so I'm actually going to give it a try right now. See what Waldmeister tastes like. It definitely st smells like a honey bun. That's actually really good. I really enjoy that. So I'm gonna pour a little bit out for the spirits here as well. Uh, so yeah, really exciting stuff. And the fact that this was the only bottle in the store, we found some growing out here. Uh, it's a beautiful spring day. We heard the cuckoo bird at the very beginning. Uh, very, very just a celebratory spring day. And it, it is interesting that plants like this have been kind of 
criminalized in the sense that it used to be such a, a big thing to the culture and traditions and even the religion here, and it has been removed. So just interesting, very interesting. So our next stop on this little journey and adventure is actually the Blue Galpa, or the Blue Mud Hole, as it actually translates apparently. Uh, but the reason I want to talk about this is because most people might walk by this and never pay attention because it really is just a mud hole that's blue. But things like this are actually some of the most important things to the ecosystem um, and in this entire lake system. Actually, there's several lakes all join in here. It's, it's very marshy. But things like this, and this is the biggest one, are actually like springs that are coming up with water, this pure clean water. It's a lime deposit um, that was created during the ice age that feeds this entire area. And so, I mean, obviously it does have a really interesting color, but I'll put up some of the video here. If you pay attention, the water here is so clear. It's so absolutely clear, especially coming from Kentucky, how muddy any water is in Kentucky. Um, so to see water this clear, this is one of the reasons is because of holes like this. Um, you can see the other side here. It's just, you know, again, maybe not the best thing to look at but it's so important to the ecosystem here um, and so anything that's important to the natural ecosystem scientifically is going to be important spiritually as well um, and if you remember in my old Norse healing video I talked about a spring very similar to this that was literally called the blue hole in Kentucky that once again had very natural properties lots of mineral rich water um, and so yes science tells us tells us that this water is important to the ecosystem um, but to me and to pagans um, and to people in the past that uh, followed any form Form of paganism or traditional practices, this would have been just as important to them, um, just as it is important to this entire ecosystem and lake area. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things I want to show you. So in your local environments and areas, you can go check them out as well. Um, and again, these areas are just, they're so cool um, and so important that, um, you know, they're important here in Germany, they're important in Kentucky, and it just, it gets, it gets me excited. So I want to take a brief break in the middle of this video to kind of talk about the future of this content because a video like this is honestly the height of the channel to me. Being able to be in a beautiful place like this, share it with you, and talk about the local folklore, mythology, and stories is really where I want this content to be, at least you know in the future moving forward. So I hope you've enjoyed the Greek content and the other content I've made here in Europe. And I still have a lot of things to come, including the Netherlands once again, Denmark, and Scotland. So lots of things. Uh, but next year, I really want this to be the goal for the entire year to visit different countries and places around the world to share with you their stories and mythologies as well as their histories and so if you really want to see content like this uh, more and more the best thing you can do right now is hit subscribe hit like and all that stuff because these videos typically aren't the most popular but again these are the videos that I think need to exist in the pagan world in the Germanic pagan world the Norse pagan world because I think we've gotten too stuffy we've gotten too scholarly and there's only so much we can do and so much that we can talk about from the sources all of the rest of it comes from out here it comes from the names of plants touching the grass and feeling this energy seeing that tree that looks like you're still behind me um, this is how we're going to experience the faith and I really want to share that with you on this channel so subscribing and liking is a lot that you can do to help spread these videos but also if you want to support me as a creator it's a one-man band besides the person holding the camera for me right now who has been so nice to help me throughout this video uh, but otherwise it's just me so if you want to support me as a creator I do have a patreon and it really helps so much uh, you know I don't make a lot of money doing this most of it goes into doing things like this uh, so it really does mean a lot and I put a lot of content on there for you as well including our community discord live streams early access videos and all those things uh, but I really can't tell you enough how much things like patreon help me as a creator um, all of this would not have happened without the wonderful people on patreon so I know this is longer than I usually do a plug, but I can't tell you how important it is and how much I really hope you want to see more content like this. Uh, I'm, I'm so proud of this content. I'm so happy to make it. And I think it really makes a difference to share it with all of you. So thank you very much. And let's get back to the rest of this video.
So I actually do want to expand a little bit why I said, it, you know, there's only so much we can do scholarly, especially with Germanic mythology, is because simply there's just not a lot of written information about it. Um, because if you actually Google search Germanic paganism or Germanic mythology, you're going to get the prose and poetic edda as the first thing to pop up. Uh, and I do have a video exploring the differences between the two. They are subtle, but they do exist. So a lot of the research you can actually do do come from the names of things. Uh, the most basic example I can give is the Germanic word for Thursday, which is literally Donnerstag. So Donar's day, Thor's day. Um, and of course, in the days of the week in America and English as well, uh, you know, you literally have Woden's day, Wednesday, uh, Donner's tag, you know, Thursday or Thor's, uh, Thor's tag. I'm speaking German now. I'm so confused. Thursday or Thor's day. And so the names of everything is a lot of the clues that we get. So furthermore, like here at these lakes, Ostersin. I don't have a book to tell you that Ostersin actually translates to the Ostara lakes, but if you actually look at the, like the way the word is structured, um, you know, Ostersin, it can be very, you know, it can be taken as either the East Seas, the East Lakes, or it can be taken as the Easter Lakes. I've seen both translations uh, on different signs around here and from different English translations. Um, but the way I take it is the Easter Lakes, or the Easter would actually be the Ostara Lakes. So again, all tied to spring. Everything here is very spring-like. Uh, again, you have the water feeding, you have the beautiful flowers. Um, it's full of life, the mountains in the background. Everything's so bright and vibrant green. So I take it as the Osara Seas, the Spring Seas. Uh, so, you know, I could definitely picture people having spring celebrations here. There is a little village over here as well that could be have spring celebrations. So I can't show you a source material to say that. And so it's really hard to prove what I'm telling to you. But that doesn't mean that isn't, there isn't magic behind it. Oh, and as always, here's a nice little PSA to remind you to go outside because it is so lovely. I've been in cities for the last few weeks and it's just, I really needed to come into a place like this that was just in nature. Uh, and I, it's been a while since I said that. So this is your friendly reminder to get out there and explore the beautiful world. Um, there is beauty everywhere you go. Maybe it's not quite as beautiful as the Bavarian foothills in front of the Alps, but I'm still sure it's very beautiful. So further proof that this area is totally the spring sea and totally about spring energy and fertility and all those things is the hill we're on right now. Um, I come up and I'm looking around, I'm like, why is that person getting naked? And then I started thinking about the signs I saw. It was like, no bathing suits. And I thought that meant no swimming. But apparently this is a nudist hill and it's where you go sunbathe yourself naked and then you swim naked as well. So yes, this place is very much the spring sea. Well, we have reached the end of today's adventures. I really hope I was able to capture the beauty of this day. I'm truly from the moment of waking up and researching uh, the Waldmeister to finding the wine uh, to honestly getting here. This wasn't the original place we were going to explore today, uh, but we couldn't go there uh, to the mountains. And so this was actually our second plan, but everything came to better, uh, came together with the cuckoo birds, the adventures here, even the naked people, and the fact that I've been saying this whole time that this town might be a little bit more spring oriented. There might have been spring fertility festivals and things like this here back in the day. And sure enough, in the middle of the town is a maypole and just everything here just has the spirit of spring, the spirit of fertility and new life. And again, I can't show you a book showing you the information right there. There it is. What I can do is create these videos and show you that this town around Ostersin is so spring and so full of life and just it's absolutely wonderful. And I really hope I was able to capture that in this video and you were able to feel that. And I hope you enjoyed the information. And really, I wanna learn more about this uh, Waldmeister because it's really fascinating and so delicious. So hopefully I can figure out if we can grow it in the States or find out how to bring some back to everyone there so you can try it as well. So thank you all so very much for joining me for this video and my adventures here in Bavaria. So otherwise, until the haul, let's go. The signs weren't enough today. Literally back here, as I was done filming, a wedding just let out. The moment I ended the video, 
Someone just got married. How many more clear and apparent signs do we need of the spring energy and all of that here? Oh my gosh, it has been endless. Honestly, it's just been so obvious. The beauty of spring, the beauty of new life and everything. Ah, oh, don't you just love being pagan? Don't you just love it? It's amazing.